Hey everyone! I have a share today of my very first design team project for Trezoris Deluxe. And I am out in my kitchen on my kitchen island recording this because the project is so big I could not do it in my craft room at my desk underneath a tripod. So bear with me because I am not a videographer so my hands are going to be all over the place with this because I'm having to do everything one-handed so <laughs> here we go let's get into this this is an altered birdhouse and I'm going to pan out so you can see the entire thing and it is an altered birdhouse and at the base is a snippet roll and I'm just going to go over really quickly what I've done because if you continue watching after this segment you'll see a lot of the process on how this came together because I wanted to do this separately so that people who just wanted to see the project could look at it and move on but I know there are others who are interested in how these things come together so just keep watching and you'll see because this was a birdhouse a bare birdhouse from Michael's that I had gotten and I built everything up beneath from here down <laughs> so this is like a tube from like gift wrap tube only it's not gift wrap it's from I think a Tim Holtz tissue paper roll so it's really heavy duty and I made that a, a pole and then the snippet roll I also made that and again you'll see how that all came together if you keep watching but right now what I'm going to do is just kind of go over what products I used from Trezor's Deluxe. A lot of things are, well a few things are from my design team package and then there are a lot of other things that were actually purchased from Lucy's store. But I'll go over all that. So you can see I've got this crackle base on here. It was put on like stucco. and. I colored the crackle medium with the shabby pink color and then did a white wash over that as well. The base is a green gold by Golden, so you can kind of see that if you get close up. But then I whitewashed it so it covered a lot of that. You can really see it up here. So what I used on this project from Lucy's store is uh, the first thing I covered my hole after the crackle had dried. I covered that hole with this Prima resin piece and that is item number PR-001 and there's more in the package than just this heart but that is the piece that I used here. I love it. and She does still have that in her store at least uh, at the time I'm recording this video she does. And then I used in my flower cluster up here, I used, the, this was just a filigree piece, a corner actually, it's a filigree corner, and I used old silver Inca gold on it. And then I put my flower clusters together up here, and I've got flowers for my stash, and then tucked in here, you can see those dusty rose flowers right there, they're gold tipped, that's from Lucy's store. And they're all over this project, actually. And that is PF-018. And I have some feathers tucked in around different spots, too, because I kind of wanted it to look like a birds were kind of hiding, and all you saw see on this is the tail feather. This is a pink fabric flower spray from Lucy's store, PF-041. I knew I was going to be elevating this birdhouse, so I wanted to have a lot of things dangling off of it. Um, and these were perfect for that because they just drape beautifully. So those, I've got a few of those throughout this project too. It's on the other side as well. You can see it kind of sticking out right here. And I used some other like little crystal sprays and stuff that I have and everything is just kind of a melting pot of different things in here and then this vine goes down and I intertwined it with some uh, fused 
pearl strand with a few. <laughs> I can't even talk. Hello, Kim has hit the record button and lost command of the English language. Okay, and then for my little bird here, this is the beautiful shabby flower from a Lucy store that was in my design team package. And I looked on her store and I can't find this flower anymore. So I don't know if she's going to be getting more in her store or not, but I gotta tell you, this is a beautiful, beautiful shabby flower. I love this. Um, and I use that as the bird's nest. So my little bird's just sitting right there, and I love how it kind of drapes in the back. And then, so you go down, go down, go down, and then you're hitting my little snippet roll. And this is my assemblage that I did on my snippet roll. And it has some just different pieces in here. This is, um, this is all chipboard, um, chipboard pieces that I have used a couple of different greens. Um, embossing powders on and it's on the back as well I did the back side too but there's that um, I did lay out at the base of this um, Lucy's doily and that doily is DL-007 and I love the open design of that because you can still see the crackle through different parts of this because I didn't want to completely cover that up so this doily was perfect for that because it has such an open design you can still see some of that. And that's how this um, base of this actually got started here. Um, I put the doily on and then I put the reindeer moss all around the um, edge of that and then built the rest of the assemblage on top of it. So then I started, you know, tucking my little chipboard leaf pieces all in here. And that's all done with hot glue and then i have this tim holtz wallflower paper snippet that's uh, stuck on a trinket pin and it's just you know stuck in the grass i kind of wanted to stick with that bird theme throughout this entire project so and then this right here kelly martin this is for you <laughs> kelly told me she wanted to see some of my embellish aganza um uh yeah embellishments that i had made and this is a this is a oh my gosh kim spit it out <laughs> this is a art tile i guess i was going to call it a micro slide but it's that memory glass and it's uh got that faux solder technique with the UD um has connected the pieces because there's a print on the back side too but of course this is all glued down now so you can't even see that there's some more of those dusty rose flowers right here just uh, kind of all throughout the piece. And then for my snippet roll, what I did here is I took this, oh, let me find it, Ivory Velvet and Rhinestone Flower FL-001. And this is actually the color that it is. So you can see there's a difference here. And what I did is I used the Color Bloom Spray by Prima which Lucy carries in her store as well. I don't think she has tea stain in her store right now, but she has a lot of other colors and hopefully she'll get restocked on this. I gotta tell you, this is gonna be a staple in my craft room now. Um, if any of you have watched my videos, you have seen my frustration with mica sprays clogging and I've been using this tea stain and it hasn't clogged on me once. I love the pump mechanism on this spray. It's just awesome. So, I sprayed that flower with that just to give it a little bit of an aged look and the flower is wider than my spool width so I did not need a closure because of that this is kind of acting like a little stopper so that my roll stays closed on my spool here and I wanted to not fasten anything permanently because I wanted you to be able to unroll the snippet roll here and take it off and actually handle it so you could look at it. This is a full yard snippet roll that I did. Bear with me a minute, I'm trying to get this off. I'm trying again to do it one-handed. So let me get that out of the way so I can show you this. So the entire backside, hold on. 
having issues here. Limited space, one-handed. So the whole length, I'm, I used an entire yard, and this is that um, oh, Italian ivory, ivory Italian lace, LA-162. And I actually bought this from Lucy. And, because I love it so much, I think it's so pretty. So dainty and feminine, and I, I just, I, I love this lace. And I use that on the back side, so that would be what you actually see as it's sitting out as a decoration. Because this is like a home deck piece. This is going to sit outside my craft room in a hallway um, cabinet that I have. So I use that on the back side, and you can, I love that it's so sheer, you can still see the shabby fabric that I used as the backing for my snippet roll here. And everything is hand sewn or machine stitched. So I will show you what I did on my snippet roll. And Pinterest was my inspiration for this. There is a um, blog that goes, you know, kind of explains how to put these together. Although it's not really that difficult, but <laughs> it's still, it was the source of my inspiration. I'll try to remember to put, post a link down below when I get this video uploaded. So here's the beginning of my snippet roll. And what I did is I took a lot of my fabric scraps, because that's the great thing about these snippet rolls, you can just use your little bits and bobs that are left over from other projects that you do. So I had a lot of cotton muslin, just scraps, and so I stamped on it with sepia stays on ink. I think it's the Versa Fine. And I just used a bunch of different stamps for this project that kind of went with the bird theme. And I used my pinking shears to cut everything out. So everything has that, you know, nice pinking edge on it. And then it's machine stitched around. And then I did some hand stitching with gold metallic thread right here. And then I sewed a little feather charm with a couple of little seed beads in there. So it was kind of dangling a little bit. And then I did some stamping. And I'm not a stamper, so it was very imperfect stamping. My D is way off. But I don't care. Some more hand stitching and then I use some seed beads here as the breast of my bird and that's all hand sewn as well. Some more hand stitching. This Tim Holtz Eclectic Elements fabric, this was perfect. Um, it was the definition for Inspire so I cut a little snippet of that out and sewed that in. This is a doily connector um, and this is the kind of the running theme throughout my a snippet roll here. I have these little doily connectors with uh, some vintage buttons in the center um, sewn in. And then this was a bunch of fibers that I machine stitched first. I kind of just, you know, wound it around and um, then machine stitched it in. And then I hand stitched these little beads in here so that it kind of looked like a little bird's nest with eggs in it. And then here's some more seed beads that I sewed in with um, by hand, and then you know they're kind of like the flower centers here. And another doily connector and button. And this was stamped with the uh, LeBlanc stamp. And Lucy is now carrying the LeBlanc stamps in her store. She does not have this one though, but. Um, I love the LeBlanc stamps. They're probably the, one of the top three stamps that I, uh, stamp brands that I love to buy. I have a huge collection of those. Love those stamps. They're very detailed. They're, I, I, they're just beautiful stamps. So this is a LeBlanc stamp and Donna Downey stamp. Um, another doily connector, another little bird's nest with actually more beads. And I think that's a something tattered stamp that I used there. Uh, this is a Stampington and Company artist stamp. I can't remember which one. Maybe Lynn Perella. And um, another doily connector and button. So that's it. That is my little snippet roll. First one I've ever done. I plan on doing a few more of those because I love that project so much. Using all your scraps up. And this is my full project. So... Go check out Lucy's store. She just has the most beautiful things in her store. It is like going to FAO Schwartz for a kid. <laughs> it's like that for an adult. <laughs> it's just awesome. And 
if you want to continue, like I said, just keep watching if you want to see how this came together or how it started. And uh, so I will see you guys later. So what I've done now is I have gessoed all of my birdhouse and all the uh, other pieces that are going to be part of the assembly. So my little tube here and the pieces that are going to become my spool that's going to hold my snippet roll. So all that's been gessoed and now what I'm doing is I'm going to do a base coat of this golden green gold all over everything. And then after that dries, I'm going to use the Martha Stewart uh, crackle medium. And hopefully <laughs> it will work because every time I do a crackle effect, it never turns out. So hopefully this will, will work. But anyway, so I'm going to do, um, do the crackle medium, let it dry. And then after that dries, I'm going to go over it with a portrait pink, pale pink color um, all over that. And then we'll see where we're at and I'll be back. Just as I feared, I could not get the crackle medium to work. I don't know what it is with me and this technique, but I cannot get even a, a product that is designed specifically for crackling does not crackle for me. So, um, and also the Elmer's glue trick, that doesn't work for me either. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I follow the tutorials exactly as they're shown and I still can't get it to work. So, okay, what I wound up doing is I used this Martha Stewart Crackle Medium. It's a home deck um, product that I got at Home Depot over a year ago and I've slowly been using it. You can see the containers because this is the only thing that's ever worked for me properly so what i did is i applied it to all my pieces with a putty knife some areas well a lot of areas i did it really thick so i got this really deep crackle right here so that works for me so i don't know why that one works but nothing else does i did a very thin coat on the bottom here um, because I'm going to be attaching this little piece right here, that cardboard, cardboard tube. And um, so I needed this to be kind of flat. I didn't want any dimension because I need a really good seamless uh, adhesion there. Okay, and then I did not like just the flat look of the paint. So I went over it with a tulip fabric paint. I just took a spray and just kind of sprayed over it with some white so you can see. Like here's the top of the uh, snippet roll that I'm going to make. So like so. So that's going to be my snippet roll. It's going to be the base of this birdhouse. So I like the way that the crackle turned out. Okay so I went ahead and I sprayed some of the tulip dye on it. And now what I have is this beautiful piece, this doily, that I got in my design team package from Lucy. But the thing is that the color is off. So I don't want a tan color. So what I'm going to do is use this exact same fabric paint spray to color my piece here. So I'm just going to spray this. And I'm probably going to be doing some stuff at the base of this. So I don't really know how much of this is going to show. Whoops. Yeah, that's real good, Kim. But I really wanted the, um, I really wanted the crackle to show through. So that's why I like this design. It's got a really nice open design that you can see through. So you can, can still see some of the crackle showing through. Like I said, I don't know how much of this is going to show through when I'm done because I may do something at the base of this and uh, this may be a moot point. But I'm also going to do just around the edges on the back side as well because even though again it's not something you may not even see but I wanted to have it where well it's wet I'm not going to do it right now but where if, if this is flipped over, you know, the back side. You're not going to be able to do that, though, because this is going to be all connected, and you won't be able to flip it over, but I'm just staying all that way. Okay, so I'll be back 
Um, I may share some more of the process of what I'm doing here, or I may not, and in which case I'll just be doing the final reveal, and I'm either going to do the final reveal at the end of this video or at the beginning. I haven't made up my mind about that either, so anyway, I'll be back. Okay, I guess I did decide to go ahead and share a little bit more of the process of what I'm doing here. So, what I've done is I took a Prima Resin piece. Um, you can also get Prima Resins in Lucy's store too. So, um, I am using a Prima Resin piece for my birdhouse opening here. And I used a combination of E6000 and hot glue just so it would sit. And now I am putting together my little snippet roll holder and I'm using E6000 around the edge of that too. I really want this to be stuck and stay stuck. But, okay, this is the base of my unit. If I used just this alone, my birdhouse is going to topple over. So I need to get some weight put in here. And that's the reason why I wanted to put my own little spool together um, because I knew I was going to have to put something in the center. So what I've got are a bunch, you know, I've just got these decorative glass pieces. You can use anything to make this heavy. This is just what I've got. So I'm going to fill this up as much as I can like so. And then put my top piece on with the glue, like so. Like I said, just so there's some weight at the bottom of this so that it doesn't topple over. Because I plan on displaying this right outside my craft room door. I have a hallway uh, cabinet. And uh, so I want to have this kind of sit on the center of that cabinet. And uh, like I said, I don't want it to topple over. Okay, so that's where I'm at with that. I'm going to just glue this down. And what next? Oh, and then for my bird, I have this beautiful little pink bird. I love this little bird that I got at Michael's when they had that huge, you know, clearance sale on all their spring and summer stuff. And what I'm going to do, this beautiful shabby flower that I got in my design, design team package, um, that you can get at Lucy's store as well. I love this because it's uh, got the little beads around the edge of this trim in the center and then there's all this little shabbiness going on around it. I just love this. I thought this would be the perfect bird's nest for my bird to sit on because I'm going to have my bird perched on the front porch of this birdhouse here. So what I did, this was a brooch. I took the brooch piece off because I'm not going to be using it in that capacity. And I'm going to set my little bird right here, like so. So she or he. Oh, ha, it's a she. She <laughs> is going to sit. Oh, and I took the alligator clip off of this as well. I used my jewelry cutters to um, cut that alligator clip off so that this could sit really flush down in here. Um, but I like this because then the little beads will show around here. And um, I may do some of the reindeer, um, oh, what's this stuff called? It's right here in front of me and I can't, still can't say it. Reindeer moss or, you know, these little moss rolls that I got. Um, that may go underneath. I may do something with that as well underneath this. But this is the main nest part right here. I love the way that's going to sit. Um, so... Um, another thing I'm going to use, I got a few things. I've got a few things um, for my design team package, actually. These really pretty dusty pink roses. Gorgeous. And look how well this just goes with this project. I mean, just beautifully. So I'm going to use these on my project. And probably, uh, again, these are also, um, this wasn't part of my des design team package, but it is from Lucy's store. I bought these. And I'm thinking about having some of these draped down. Um, I just have a bunch of stuff out. This is the part that's fun because you get to figure out, you know, how you're going to uh, decorate your piece. Um, and that's what I'm getting into right now. I just kind of wanted to go over the process of how I got this look. Um, so probably the next time you see this, it's going to be all put together and I'm just going to do the final reveal. All right, I'll see you later.